Well, it's an old rainy day. And I don't know how long it's been, maybe four weeks, three or four weeks. And I'm on my way to Morgantown. Vivian and I are going to pick up a few things at the store. And thought I'd go through the country, passing uh, where the old red covered bridge used to be. Thought I'd stop in here and check on the little baggie up in the tree with the fig newtons I put in it. Because this is the place right here that I wrote the article about on the observations website. I was talking about the orb on Warrior's Trail, I think is the name of the article. Of course, something has really been traveling up and down there. Anyway, me and Pete Fields had a, a green orb come down out of, an, out of an overgrown field that was up here. Well, we came out here one night with an Airedale dog that I had. And as we entered this place, Pete looked up and saw a green light coming down. And he said, now I wonder who that is. And I turned to look, and uh, it wasn't a flashlight like you might think. It was a just a glowing round thing about the size of a small cantaloupe or grapefruit. And it came down out of them, down off of the hill into these trees where we're getting close to now, onto that bank over there that you see on the far side of the stream. But not exactly right there. It was on down to the left. And uh, anyway, the article's up there if anybody wants to read it. But we ended up crossing over the other side of the stream way down when we were finished. Must have walked for an hour. And on our way back, we got right across from where we had all that activity on the other side and we got straight across from it on the other side of the stream and a huge tree fell over or was pushed over come crashing down I mean it kind of scared us there for a second made us jump but well doesn't look like anybody took anything there's the, this is a favorite fishing place of Viv. Viv, she likes to come down here by these old sycamore roots and fish for smallmouth out there on the curve. But, well, there are the fig newtons. Oh, that bag sure looks like it got water in it too. I don't blame them. That's it. See that place across the way there? Where that little stream comes into the big one? Andy Yurt's trap went off on my foot there one time. A bunch of mink tracks there. Actually, it was the one to the left. There was a tree missing. There was a big sycamore over there. And uh, you probably can't see that water coming down on that side. It came right out underneath the sycamore. Yeah, anyway, this is a pretty good place to trap for coon, mink. A little rough from trapping for muskrat. I'm going to get back to the car. It's a dangerous creek right here. 
There was one young trapper that was killed in here before I ever trapped here. He went under the ice and Whiteley has a lot of fast current in it. Ripples, or riffles, whatever you want to call them, and deep holes. And in a shallow place, kind of shallow, you know, a couple, three feet deep, he wanted to cross over to the other side to check his traps. And the ice broke. And the current was fast enough in that area as he fell down, it took him underneath the ice downstream with a great big hole in the bottom. And it deposited him under the ice in that hole and he couldn't get back. And he died there. Anyway, I don't want to get my iPhone wet. It's all water in that bag. I wouldn't eat them things myself. Okay. Guess I better get going. <laughs>